Hey, what's up? I'm KBHD here, and what a day to be a video creator in a studio. Also, if you're wondering about this shirt, you can get it at shop.mkbhd.com. But also, if you wanna try your hand at a free one, well, currently, the biggest tech giveaway of all time is going on right now, a collaboration with me, Mr. Who's the Boss, and dbrand. There's literally dozens of iPhones and Galaxy S22 Ultras and PS5s and Nintendo Switches and more. And there are some shirts in there with all of that tech too. Link below if you wanna enter. So today, Apple announced a bunch of new stuff some of which is kind of boring, but some of which is really interesting here. So the beginning of the event was pretty chill. They dropped an Apple TV Plus announcement with some exclusive Friday night baseball games. Meh, I don't really watch that much baseball, so meh, kind of boring. Then they dropped some new colorways for the iPhone 13. So there's a new solid green 13 and a Alpine green 13 Pro. So that's fine. You know, they already have a red, so they couldn't add that as the mid-cycle refresh, but green, cool. Got it. And then we got the iPhone SE refresh that we were all expecting. This is the budget iPhone and Apple absolutely followed the same formula they typically do. So they put the new chip in here. It's the same A15 Bionic that's in the iPhone 13 and in the old body, which in this case is still the iPhone 8. They also give it 5G, sub six only, so no millimeter wave. And that's it. So that's, that's the iPhone SE. I mean, they did, so the new chip gives it a deep fusion, gives it HDR4, gives it the new photographic styles. And they did also throw in a slightly larger battery. So that's all good, but no surprises at all here. It's kind of funny, the SE and iPhone SE used to, well, it stands for special edition, but honestly, this is the most formulaic, boring, non-special phone that Apple makes. And then the price they dropped is actually slightly higher than last year. It's 429 instead of 399 still probably one of the best budget phones in its general class. It's given you the best performance and one of the best cameras. So I'll probably still review it. If you guys are interested, there's a lot of competition at that price, so it won't be easy to win it, but that's the iPhone SE. And then the iPad Air also got an update. Same body and design as before, but now there's an M1 chip inside. Now, Apple's been way ahead in the tablet performance and packaging for a while, and this is just another example of that. This will be an absurdly fast chip, the fastest in any tablet, and it's in the package of an iPad Air now for $599. Plus, they also updated the selfie camera to the 12 megapixel ultra wide with center stage. It also gets 5G, and it's got a Thunderbolt port now because of M1, and it added a new blue color. As far as I can tell, that's that's it. Everything else is the same. Same battery, same display, same fingerprint reader, same design, all that. And they mentioned they wanted to keep making steps forward on their commitment to the environment, so they're using recycled design, I mean, sorry, recycled aluminum, recycled aluminum in this thing. Um, I'm still mad they haven't added Final Cut Pro to the iPad yet. This thing is so powerful and still, I mean, iMovie's fine, but like, come on, add Final Cut Pro, cowards. But then we got to the real meat of the presentation, the unveiling of the new Mac Studio with M1 Ultra chip and a new studio display. Now this, this is interesting to me, not just because we have a YouTube channel called The Studio, make sure you get subscribed to that, and not just because the studio dog's name is Mac, so we already have a studio Mac, but yeah, this particular machine feels so perfectly targeted. It's clearly built for someone like me. Oh, are you a creative professional? in a studio? Okay, so yeah, this is this is for you. You've got my attention. So this all starts with the new chip that's inside that they announced, which is called the M1 Ultra. So basically you can think of this as two M1 Max chips fused together. I mean, technically speaking, that's not that far off. So a single M1 Max by itself, that chip in the highest end MacBook Pro that's already crushing, was the largest and most powerful chip Apple ever made. This M1 Ultra, I guess shout out to Samsung for the Ultra name, behaves like a single massive chip. Literally 2.5 terabytes per second of bandwidth between the two halves of the chip, and then 800 gigs per second of memory bandwidth for the whole combined thing. But the whole thing has 64 or 128 gigs of unified memory, it has a 20 core CPU, with 16 of those being high performance cores for high efficiency, and with a 48 core or 64 core GPU. So that's good stuff. That's good stuff. It's the new biggest, most powerful chip Apple's ever made. It lives at the top of their lineup. And the only machine that they announced that will have this new M1 Ultra chip inside it is the new Mac Studio. So this thing is, uh, it's in the shape of a Mac Mini. If the Mac Mini ate a lot of 
extra, maybe it ate another Mac Mini. I don't know. Basically, it's roughly the same 7x7 footprint, but it's much thicker. It's a whole 3.7 inches tall. So still small enough to fit under most monitors, but if you have a ruler or something, or if you happen to know exactly how big 3.7 inches is, you know, you can see that's pretty tall and it can fit on most desks. But honestly, this is a fascinating design. Basically, it has all these perforations at the bottom where it's sucking in fresh cool air, and then basically half the internal volume of this thing is for cooling. There's a bunch of fans in the top and it's pushing that hot exhaust air out of the top half of the back of it. Now I'm no expert, but I'm just looking at the thing and it looks like it has enough cooling, but also it worries me just a little bit, just a little bit, because it reminds me, kinda, of the old trash can Mac Pro. So you remember that thing also had the cool air coming in the bottom, all the components in the middle, and then the cooling out the fans at the top. But I'm thinking Apple's learned their lesson from that machine, especially because now this is, after all, their own silicon instead of a hot Intel chip and a huge dedicated GPU. But yeah, I'm just saying, that's a lot of power in a pretty compact box, basically. But then last but not least, there's the new studio display. So they dropped a 27 inch 5K display that looks like a junior version of the Pro Display XDR, just minus the whole XDR thing, basically. So it's got a couple different stand adjustments and I'll get to the pricing of all the stuff in a second. It has a nano texture glass option and there's a webcam and speakers in there. The webcam is familiar, once again, it's a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera with center stage built in, a triple mic array, and a six speaker setup that supports Dolby Atmos and spatial audio. So okay, for my take, so on the chip, I am very impressed. I mean, I definitely wanna get it in here in our studio and do our benchmarking and testing because Apple did show a bunch of graphs again, as they usually do, but they cycled through them very quickly and a lot of them weren't super useful. But it basically looked like they did most of their comparisons against the old iMac Pro, which is no longer on their site anymore, rip, and then against the current Intel Mac Pro Tower which you still can technically buy, but definitely shouldn't. So on paper, they're just gonna brag about performance per watt, right? So they're saying it uses less power than this Core i5 and better CPU performance than a Core i9-12900K at the same power consumption. And it can deliver the same performance at 100 watts less power, which is great for everybody's electricity bill and for thermals. And then of course they're saying it'll take way less power than an RTX 3060 Ti and can take 200 watts less power than an RTX 3090 while delivering the same performance, which sounds absolutely sick. But I'm gonna be testing that for myself, we gotta see. So we'll have those machines in here sooner or later and make sure you get subscribed to see those videos when they come out. But then as far as the Mac Studio itself, I'm very tempted, or I should say I'm interested uh, so this machine actually starts with the M1 Max in it, and that one starts at $2,000, but then they'll ship you the M1 Ultra Max Studio, that starts at $4,000. And that one has two Thunderbolt ports on the front, by the way, instead of the two USB-C if you get the M1 Max. And on Apple's site, you can spec it up to the 64 core GPU for a thousand bucks. You can double that unified memory for 800 bucks, and you can go up to eight terabytes of storage for a total max of $8,000 which isn't actually that crazy. But my main question, and I tweeted this during the event, is basically, is this a Mac Mini Pro or is it a Mac Pro Mini? And that's a real, there, there's a real difference and that actually matters. Because if this new machine, this Mac Studio, outperforms the literal highest end 28 core Mac Pro, then is this the end of the road? Is this the highest end machine that Apple now needs to make to complete the transition of all of the Macs. This will basically make it the new Mac Pro. It just happens to be small enough to fit on your desk, but it's totally capable of running a whole studio or even doing things that the current Mac Pro isn't doing. It has double the media engine, so it can now play back 18 streams of 8K ProRes 422 video. Like how could you possibly need more than that? I'm looking at our, I'm looking at the, the Intel Mac Pros over here with the 28 core Xeon chip and 768 gigs of RAM and the Vega 2 GPU. And I'm like, that that got to end of life pretty quickly. It was pretty expensive. But John Turnus did say something at the very end of the presentation. Together with the studio display, these products will empower users to create the studios of their dreams and to continue to change the world. 
and they joined the rest of our incredible Mac lineup with Apple Silicon, making our transition nearly complete with just one more product to go, Mac Pro. But that is for another day. Now back to Tim. Uh, and see, that that actually answers the question. See, it's, it's not a Mac Pro Mini. It's a Mac Mini Pro. It's a, it's a small desktop computer that sits right on your desk, on your little mouse pad, just like that, and, and costs a tenth of the price of the big dog, and just happens to be just as capable, if not more capable, because of the architecture. But yeah, it's, it's clearly not the end of the line, and there's still one more. Like, there's a reason there's still a bunch of Mac Pro towers behind them in their labs, and they're not all replaced with Mac Studios. The tower form factor can still unlock the very highest end of power and modularity and what the Mac is capable of. So that'll have, I guess, a new chip we haven't even heard about yet. And that's the one I'm gonna keep waiting for. Although clearly the new Mac Studio maxed out should be totally capable of handling everything we do here in this studio. Now the studio display, stand included, starts at $1599. It's an extra $300 for the nano texture coating and an extra $400 to make that stand height adjustable, which is kind of crazy. Now there is a lot of talk about whether or not this is actually a good price for this monitor overall. And I think the reason that's actually kind of hard to answer is there isn't really any other monitor out that's exactly like it. So the way I kind of look at it, it's like they, it's if they took a 27 inch iMac display and just popped the display out exact same panel, same brightness, same resolution, same size, and then just repackaged it and put a bunch of Apple features around it. So I mentioned the webcam was center stage. You know, other monitors have webcams and mics, but not quite like this, you know? Other monitors have speakers too, but if the MacBook Pro speakers are anything to go by, then these are probably pretty unique as well. And then the monitor has a whole A13 Bionic chip inside just to act as a super high powered image signal processor for that webcam to do noise cancellation on the microphones and for your three USB-C ports and one Thunderbolt port around the back. Basically, this is like everything the LG 5K ultrafine monitor ever wanted to be, except that thing came out six years ago, it had basically the same specs, but this is a much cleaner packaged, much better looking, you know, first party version. So I think if that's what you're looking for, it's still pricey, but it is pretty unique in that way. You know, it's not HDR, it's not higher fresh rate. There's lots of things that it isn't, but you know it'll pair well with basically any Mac and that's what it does well that makes it so good. But so that that's it, there you have it. Those are my reactions. Honestly, get subscribed to this channel if you wanna see the evaluations in the machines as they come in and get subscribed to the studio channel if you wanna see my reactions to the events sort of in real time and as we evaluate them when they show up here. Those videos are always really fun. Either way, that's been it. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys soon. Peace.